funktv.ca for all the best modern rock videos and interviews. Ben Martin of punktv.ca here with Mo Big and ben. the boop, boop. Sweatshop Union. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Not bad, Pretty not good. bad. How you doing, Ben? Good, good. So for the people out there in punk world who don't know about you guys, what are the origins of Sweatshop Union? Uh, we're not a punk band, but uh, we were a bunch of dudes uh, in high school that all lived fairly close to each other. We all made uh, hip-hop music in the late 90s, and then we decided to try pulling our resources into a compilation album called Switch Up Union, which took off and blew out of our control and hands and turned into this mad monster now. Indeed. And on August 5th, your next album is coming out called Water Street. Water Street. What's the writing and recording process like for a... Wait, wait. Water Street. Water Street. Water Street. As far as uh, the recording, I, I, um, it, it took longer than, than the other albums because the other albums we did within a month usually, you know, because we were usually, you know, busy touring or whatever, and then it was like, you gotta get it done by this time, and it was done within a certain time frame, whereas this one kind of took a, you know, it took its own time, Yeah. so it definitely has a different feel because of that, and I think it's a little bit more maybe varied as far as the vibes go on. Yes. Vibes. Go chase vibes. <laughs> uh, there are, aren't very many uh, guest appearances on it, unlike most hip-hop albums these days. What, how intentional was that? No, because our group kind of is the guest Totally. Featured guests. True. Yeah. There's too many of us, and we're cheap, and we don't want to pay people for verses, so we took uh, people that would do stuff for free. Indeed. No, we're just kidding. Yeah, we got Mocha and our homie Evil, but those guys are a family anyway, so those don't even really count as featured guests, because sure. they'd be on it anyway. So you guys are uh, made up of a bunch of different groups, a collective sort of like the Wu-Tang Clan? Sort of like the Wu Tang Clan. Oh, if, 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 you were, if, you were to, if you were to compare yourself, who would be the Brizza of the group? Well, Kyle. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I don't think you know what I think. That's what makes us uh, better and worse is because we're all Rizzas, all Method Mans, and all you got. <laughs> but are you so all, we have our we have our days where we're on top of everything and like the abbot of the shit. But we have days when. You know, some of us, do, you know, every one of us has days where we just are you god, yeah. and don't. There's definitely no, there's definitely no leader in the group. Like Reza would be the yeah. leader or whatever. He just lays out the plan. We don't really have that. So, in a way, like he said, it, it's good and bad in some ways. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um. But are there days where anyone's ODB? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of yeah, sometimes definitely. multiple members. Yeah. Usually at, at nights at, after shows, it happens. Totally, totally. Um, Big baby Jesus. No crack cocaine charges, though. No, not yet. <laughs> yes. I'm After this album. Um, so, seven people is a lot of people to have in a group. What challenges do you face with that many people in a group? Feeding and paying that many people, seven members of the group. Yeah. And then the other people that are involved in it as well. And I've always said it's like, if you're going to get dressed in the morning, it's like getting dressed seven times. Yep. Yeah, if there's any issue, any decision, it has to be passed by everyone and yep. whatever, whatever. So it takes longer and it makes you feel like you're schizophrenic sometimes, but it's kind of worth it in the end. Definitely. Definitely. But when it's really shitty, uh, you have that many people Seven to... Times. Well, you also have that buffer zone of they have to deal with it too, so at least you're not yeah. by yourself. Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, you guys are about to head out on a giant tour. Giant. For Water Street. Water Street. Um, how stoked are you guys about that? I'm pretty stoked. I mean, for one, I'm just glad it's out. Yeah. I'm glad people believe us now that we have a new album, and it's actually here. Right here. Um, I think the first leg of the tour is really familiar ground for us, so we're not like yeah. excited, but we're excited just to have the new album there and perform new material. But then, you know, the next couple months are gonna be pretty crazy. So yeah, it's definitely exciting to get into everyone's hands because, like he said before, it's there's a big space in between. You know, and it's like we've been sitting on it, and we've even been doing some of the songs in our performance, but it's just like, ah, people don't know the words to it and right. shit because they haven't. You gotta print it out. You gotta print it. So none of these lyrics.com bad renditions of sweatshop <laughs> songs. Um, but you gotta buy the CD to get the lyrics. True. So you won't if you download it. Indeed. Buy it. You heard Ben. Um. There's a punk band called No Effects, and they recently did this documentary where they went to crazy cities around the world, like uh, in uh, the Middle East, in, in Southeast Asia, and in Africa, because they said that 
North American touring was becoming way too predictable. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that statement? Probably true. Yeah. I mean, we, we haven't we haven't scouted. We've sold too many albums out in uh, Africa, and, uh, Southeast Asia, but it would be nice. Yeah. No, but I mean, if if you're a band like that and you can do things like that, it makes for good news. Yeah. If you are, if you don't think your fan base is going anywhere, I don't know. If for us, it would be the best look when you're trying to when we're trying to yeah. develop these places. And I think for us, yeah, we haven't really scraped the bottom of the barrel yet, so it's like we haven't really done our full deal in North America. So until we do, it's kind of like we don't really have even the option to, to really do it. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, no effects is zigzag North America probably more times. Than yeah. You'd like that they would even like to remember. So it's like you got to got to do something to keep it fresh and innovative. I mean, also for them, for their fans, like. Oh, we're doing another North American tour. Like, okay, but if they're we're doing this crazy fucking shit, they're like, oh, that's dope. At least yeah. they're keeping it fresh. Yeah. All right. Well, if you could take a track off of Water Street and get a DJ to remix it, what track would you take, and what DJ would you choose? That's a good question. I would take. Um. You can each have one, right? No, well, let's pick the no, one no, that don't pay. No, no, that's why it's big. Obviously, all the Kiprios songs. Oh. Exactly, you know, those all remixed anyway. No, I'm just DJ kidding. DJ Colin. I don't know. I think it'd be too hard to pick a song like that. Obviously, I probably want it to be mine, because then hopefully it'd be a big DJ, and then i get some publishing. So that would be my motives. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for. Probably Mo too. Publishing whatever we get the most of would be the selection, yeah. but I'd have to say a DJ to remix our stuff. But that's the thing: if we'd want it to be remixed in a good way, or just like by some crazy DJ who would just make us more money, we probably would do the job. All right. How about be? artistically rather okay. than monetarily? Hmm. I'm at a loss. You know what? I would have to say Shadow, but. Yeah. With that, Shadow would have to make us a hip hop beat, none of this uncle shit or whatever, any of that. Or the or the hyphy stuff he was trying to do. Yeah, no. Sorry, Shadow. And what and what track would he do? I'll, I'll let Ben pick. There he knows go. the punk nation. This is his nation, so he can pick it for us. To be awesome. Pop. Awesome. Right. You're in the captain seat for that one. Um, because there's seven people in the group, there's probably a lot of side projects. Can you tell us about some side projects? Those are just actually starting to see some light. Yeah. Um, our, me and Mo's here, we have a group called the Dirty Circus, which is like, actually was the groups that we were, had before Sweatshop Union exist, right. back in like, we were in high school still. So we're, we're, at, we're just starting to do the writing for that, so that won't take any kind of duration like this Sweatshop album took to come to light. Okay. As well as that, uh, two other guys from the group Pigeonhole, they're going to be making an album, uh, Evil and myself, we're going to make an album called Trillionaires, and uh, there's a lot more opportunity well, Kip, to Kip make. Oh, yeah, Kip, sorry, yeah, Kip, Kip, Kip Rios has a new album that comes out soon, and uh, yeah, man, we definitely want to take the advantage of some of the new opportunities we have to. Rock! Watch punktv.ca for all the best modern rock videos and interviews.